Hello my soccer universe, what a final we had yesterday, uh, that was amazing and the streak is over, Bayer Leverkusen have been beaten by an Atalanta side, I actually didn't want to say it, but you know we have one expert here on Austrian TV who already said this Atalanta side is something that Leverkusen have not faced, because they are also quite resourceful, have a few tricks up their sleeves. And that's exactly what undid Leverkusen. Now, it has to be said that I think Atalanta, unlike the Coppa Italia final, this time really could play the game with Gamaka up front, whereas Leverkusen looked uncharacteristically flat. I mean, all credit to Atalanta, but I think it was not a good performance by Leverkusen over overall uh, for ones that didn't have the solutions. And I really wonder, did Xabi Alonso get a little bit too cute on this one? Did he not read in uh, Atalanta correctly? That was my wonder throughout, especially the first half. It was also a remarkable final in the sense that if you look at the statistics, you would not get it, it was really 3-0. That this was a very one-sided final. It's again showing that statistics don't tell you everything. And I'm saying this as a certified statistician. I am personally over the moon for Atalanta and yes, me wearing uh, black and blue as a Milan fan does not come naturally. However, this Atalanta side has been a one that I have been secretly admiring uh, for quite a while. Gasparini has done an amazing job in a small town like Bergamo. I mean, they call themselves the queen of the province uh, because they are probably of all the provincial clubs, they are the biggest now for sure, because they have won a European trophy for crying out loud. So yeah, but Gasparini finally wins a title and I find it so uh, ironic that the coach that has always been judged on the trophies he didn't bring home. I mean, he lost three Coppa Italia files. He has been called in Italy a loser also due to his very uh, unfortunate spell at Inter. And now he's the coach that brings the most impressive winning streak that we had in a long time to an end and denies Leverkusen a treble, whereas uh, he himself finally crowns his career with a really impressive trophy and a really impressive run. I mean, in the preview, we already said it. It was an impressive run of At Atalanta the final, especially the 3-0 against Liverpool, but also uh, twice getting the better of a sporting side that has been romping through Portugal. It's also not something that you should really look past that. I was squarely on the Atalanta side. Uh, yeah, there's it the Italy factor, but I also felt that this team is has been getting a lot of disrespect. Now, I don't want to take away from Leverkusen their great season. What Xabi Alonso did this entire season is probably the best coaching job I've seen, uh, let's say, this decade. Yeah? Let's say this decade, we might extend it for for, 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 for that we need more analysis. So, I don't want to take anything away from Leverkusen. This is squarely on Atalanta. And yes, Leverkusen were flat. Yes, they probably had the title celebration because they lifted the trophy. Whereas Atalanta were a little bit more hungry because uh, while I didn't feel they were dejected after the Coppa Italia final, curiously enough, I think they eyed the Europa League all time along. They were always looking. This is the title we want to have. And then for other other uh, not only becoming the first um, player to score a hat trick in a final since Jupp Heynckes in a Europa League slash UEFA Cup final, since Heynckes did it in, I think, 75. Uh, that's already, he's the first one only when it was called Europa League to score a hat hat trick. And also, great vindication because he already lost two finals this year. The AFCON final with Nigeria and the Coppa Italia final just a week ago. So happy faces all around. Uh, when we look at the game, as I said, I was already a little bit surprised uh, with, with the lineups. I mean, what came from Atalanta was more or less what I would expect. Uh, maybe Lukman and Skamaka and the Ketelare up, up front was very offensive, but it was for me not unclear. These three have been playing for Atalanta there. Uh, it was a, a big call for Gas Gasparini to still stay very, very offensive against this level Leverkusen side that I said can beat you in so many ways. And especially when I saw the lineup with no Andre in there, no Boniface in there. But he went Grimaldo Wirtz oddly up front. It was weird. 
However, what Atalanta does really, really well is uh, they do man marking. Every player is, uh, every opposition player is tightly man marked, and there's immediate pressure on uh, on there, and he demands a high worker from his front line. And, and you can see Levitev Kuzin only in the first ten minutes had one time that he could play through the pressure. But other than that, it was Atalanta on it, on it, on it, on it, winning, winning the ball, and Leverkusen didn't know what to really do with it because also they didn't have this focal point up front. Wirt is a really awesome player. I mean, probably, probably at, at the moment, uh, uh, the German player that I like, like I like to watch most, uh, Grimaldo and Adli have both been really, really, really good. But I think instead of Adli, I would have played Boniface. Because uh, this Atalanta defense is also, the, I mean, there's collagen that's in there, there's here in there, there's Jim, 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 Jim City, uh, players that ac actually like to anticipate also passes and intercept this way, which did not work out in the Coppa Italia final, but that also bring quite a physical presence. And with Boniface, you would have gotten a little bit more oomph up front. So that's the one thing I also did not quite understand why Andrich was left out instead of Palacios. Uh, is he saving them for the, the Pokal final on Saturday? That is another thing that I did not quite understand. So for me, the Leverkusen line lineup was a little bit of off, off a surprise. And it was Palacios that actually was then um, very important in uh, conceding the first goal because it was a corner kick by uh, the Mola Lukman uh, that Leverkusen corner cleared came back it came to Cop Miners who had a tremendous game closing down space all the time uh, played it into Zappa Costa who across the box uh, you know but in a way that the goalie really can, can, can come out and um, Palacios is completely forgetting getting up uh, about Lukman very very can see he's there wandering I, I was just taking corner, let, let's see, and then he makes the one run, intercepts the ball, and puts it into the net in one motion. It was really well played there, but it was also a big sleep up from Palacios. That has to be clearly said. And one of them thought that Atalanta may let off, no, they never let off. For the next 15 minutes, it was more of the same. Leverkusen could not breathe. They were intercepting, they, they were breaking. And I think when the one, one, one came, I think two minutes before, after 10 minutes, said, Atalanta putting on so much pressure. Hey, can, can they keep it up? And they better get something out of it. Because if they don't, don't, don't score here, that might have been it. And fortunately for them, they did score. Uh, the second goal was also a weird one because it was a goal kick from Kovar and both of them played their reserve goal kick keepers that uh, I think Adli then had it straight back into his own half and Lukman then turns through uh, Shaka, takes a shot and it's 2-0. And at that point you had kind of the feeling, yeah, they're halfway there. They are the halfway there. Now Grimaldo Kulkov, I think in 34th minute, he had a one-on-one -on -one with Musso. Uh, he decides to lob him, though does it in such a bad way that it was never really in danger. And then I think Shaka had another shot uh, very late in the first half that just passed past the goal. But I think Musso was there, but this was all that Leverkusen could muster. On the flip side, the Ketelare uh, had also a good chance. Probably could have made it three before the half. This was all Atalanta all over. And I think those timid shots from Leverkusen are just like propping up the stats more than really showing what what was there. It also has, has, has been said that uh, all the Atalanta goals, especially the ones in, in the first half, were also low um, probability goals. So that's why they don't show up so much in the XG. But despite Leverkusen having so much possession, the first half and also in the second, second half, you never had the feeling they have control of the game, which is so weird. Again, second half, Xabi Alonso brings on uh, Bombo Boniface. And now, the one thing we all had in the back of our mind, it's a two-goal lead. Leverkusen have come back from two-goal leads a lot this season. However, there was one crucial difference. Uh, in most of these games, I want to take out maybe uh, the last Stuttgart game because they were similar outplayed there. But then they got the goal and that lifted them up. So this was the one thing to, to avoid. But if I look at most of the, all, all of the other comebacks, they've been missing chance before and they knew it will come, it will come, it will come. So in that sense, yeah, um, I didn't feel it that there will be a comeback. 
And in other games, like for, for instance, both of the Karabakh games, you really could feel that Leverkusen is putting on so much pressure that eventually it will pay off. But I didn't see it here. I don't, I cannot remember a really good chance in the second half. I just felt that maybe there might fall a ball maybe towards um, a Boniface or a Wirtz and Tepoli, but it never came. And then it was a counter-attack again in the 75th minute uh, where Skamaka can hold the ball and the Leverkusen players don't close him down. They give him enough space. There's Lukman on the outside. And uh, then what Tapsoba is doing, honestly, put a little bit pressure on Lukman. I mean, he just needs to make one, one turn, then lashes a shot and it's 3-0. And at that point, everyone knew this is, this is done. And yes, there was a potential penalty call late on where uh yeah not quite clear why and how this went blah 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 but in the end it was very very one-sided i was even shocked when he took up um florian wirtz and brought on patrick schick for instance um this was xabi alonso for the first time this season being shown that yeah it's not quite perfect as i said i don't want to take anything away from atalanta and it was great to see them lift the trophy and they fully, 100% deserve that. So I don't want to put an asterisk on, on there. But this Leverkusen looks flat. Were they overtaken by, by the occasion because they are now favorites? Atalanta thrive being underdogs. I mean, they, are no, they, they know they are underdogs. Maybe this was also against Juve. They knew that they are the favorites. Maybe this is part of it as, as well. Here, they could play freely. Leverkusen did not look free. Absolutely did not look free. This is the second only trophy ever for Atalanta. They won a Coppa Italia in the early 60s and that's it. And as I said, Ad Adam or Lukman uh, becomes the first Europa League. And I hate to make this distinction because it's the same competition, still the same trophy. Is it the most beautiful trophy of all three? I, I, I would say so. Um, that scores a hat-trick, but also he had the quickest double. I mean, within 26, I mean, it never happened in the final. It was the uh, uh, the Mola Lukman final. I was really happy. I also have, have to say, I mean, I missed the Lukman celebration. He got a yellow card once for that in Italy, so maybe that was a reason. But uh, what, what, what's more, when he celebrated, you could see there is joy. But there was also always a little bit of thought, but this is Leverkusen, they're unbeaten. Yeah, they're unbeaten no more. 51 games unbeaten, 52. That was it. It had to come. And that it came the way it came was probably shocking for Leverkusen. I don't want to be Kaiserslautern now. I don't want to be Kaiserslautern now. Because I think these things and the only way to get this off the chest is to win the double. This is now becomes imperative for Lever Leverkusen to really see. I mean, it's already a historic season, but in order to really underline it, you cannot afford to lose to the Kaiserslautern. I don't think so. This will put a dent in a really, really golden, super, absolutely impressive season. I want to close out with saying, yes, this was the final plate between the two smallest cities ever, but that is Atalanta that wins a very organically built club and a club that, you know, uh, where uh, even the fan base, they always say everyone hates us. Yeah, might be true <laughs> in the way, especially in the Italian cont context, a very vocal fan base, uh, very well organized, or but this is organically built club. Gasparini took it over and they were managing to build a really good uh, squad by great scouting. Look at all the players that went away from Atalanta over the last years. And I think Cope Miners is definitely adding, will be added to that. And I think people will have now a look at Lukman as well. Although <laughs> there's always part of me and this is probably the romantic part. Let's keep this team a little bit together. Um, they might do something. However, um, I don't think the one thing is Atalanta can beat every, every team at any given time. However, they're not consistent enough. But when they play it to the top level, they're undeniable. So yeah, bravo Atalanta. Really happy for you. Really happy that Gasparini's reign. You know, Gasparini is not one for the faint-hearted overall, but I, this he deserved a trophy. He deserved a trophy to kind of as a symbol for the great work he has done now in over eight years at Atalanta to be continued. I think they should name the stadium after him. It should not be the Gavis Stadium. It should 
be the Gasparini sta Stadium after they have rebuilt the whole thing. Personal opinion. Any case, Atalanta have qualified for the Champions League already through the league. Now they've qualified as well. Uh, the question is, will they finish fourth or fifth in the league, which could also have an implication on how many spots Italy will get. But that's a little bit complicated. Let's leave, let's leave it there. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!